Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on Unknown Facts About Black Box by Mr. Vishal Shah. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's, today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinosoft Technologies. He is known as Seasoned Technology Stalwart, an inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and most importantly, a go-to guy for MSMEs. As the name of the session, session suggests, this webinar is about unknown facts of black box. It is brainchild of Mr. Vishal. In this candid interaction, he will reveal interesting facts about black box that are largely unknown. It will be an insightful session on failure stories, customer persona, less known features, hidden technologies, buyback policies. It is all about our journey of challenging the traditions, discovering our own way to solve the problem in and out of box way. We assure that it will be an insightful session and interesting for your team. If you have any questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in the question and answer tab in the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the question in the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you want to ask any question in the end of the session, you may please raise your hand. We shall activate your microphone to ask the question. Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Thank you, Prasanna. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, after uh, Black Box uh, was awarded by Graham Bell uh, Foundation, we have increasingly received the request that they would like to know more about Black Box. It is being uh, in Indian technology, indigenously developed technology, and most of its competitors are not Indians. And uh, on that line, um, Graham Bell Technologies Award, you know, they were uh, conferred on Black Box for its innovative business model for certain technologies which Black Box use, which are out of box technologies. So that's how we came up with this idea that let us uh, have a webinar on unknown facts about black box. You know, it is not like a product which is successful was, you know, conceived very successful and it has been successful. It is an outcome of a lot of hard work, failures, learnings, and then only uh, we could really uh, hit the bull's eye. And now this product is, uh, you know, being used by so many MSMEs. It is very popular among MSMEs because it gives them very <clears throat> plug and play kind of compliance. It protects their data from loss, leakage and theft. It saves a lot of cost on email front. It saves a lot of cost on software license front, hardware. So, uh, and it also simplifies a lot of things. Recently, we launched uh, Black Box Academy also uh, in order to create and complete the ecosystem for this kind of product. So, uh, I will, uh, in this particular session, I will talk about uh, uh, certain uh, behind the scenes uh, stories, you know, uh, which are there, which are very interesting for any technology uh, enthusiast as well as anybody who wants to start is our own business. So before we move <clears throat> to the next slide, I request uh, uh, all attendees to go through this poll. Prasanna, can we launch a poll? We would like to understand the profile of the attendees. So as we see on the screen, around 20%, 25% of the people are owners or custodians of the enterprise data. 50% are IT professionals managing SME IT infrastructure. 
in 25% of the people are system integrators or IT consultants helping MSMEs. So we have a very, very uh, relevant cloud here. And uh, <clears throat> we will now uh, move to the next slide, which is about how we started this company, what was our Eureka moment and what was our failure story. So when we started this company in 2008, uh, we founders were working in large enterprise. We had entrepreneurial experience and uh, we uh, conceived an idea that uh, India is going to, as a country is going to play a very big role in global economy. And uh, that will be driven through the MSMEs of India. And uh, that was our vision. And uh, we realized that MSMEs of India in those days were not very well uh, technically equipped and uh, global standards of competition demanded very technological satisfaction. So uh, this kind of technological sophistication was not there. And uh, we thought that Indian MSMEs would be forced to um, you know, have a sophisticated technology adopted in order to compete on global standards. And when we looked around for various products which can equip Indian MSMEs, uh, you know, globally competitive by technical sophistication, uh, most of the products pertaining to infrastructure, pertaining to data protection, were uh, actually uh, available in the market, but they were very complex. They were very, very expensive because they were, these products were designed uh, keeping in uh, keeping very large scale usage in mind and MSMEs don't have that kind of use cases and there's a reason they would end up buying that product for which has got 100 features but they would end up um, you know using hardly 20 features but they would be end up paying 100 percent for the 100 percent features so that was our idea that let's design a product which is uh, you know very uh, minimal in its uh, features which is very, very relevant in its features. And it actually is designed with a design thinking premise that it is going to be used at a smaller scale. We mean smaller scale means 10 computers to 500 computers. So uh, that was our vision. And uh, we also realized that uh, uh, India on, in those days was on its growth trajectory and it was becoming an IT giant you know, um, country in, in the world. You know, Indian IT industry dominates the world IT. And uh, we realized that uh, most of the times when SMEs will require IT talent, it will not be really available to them because most of the IT talent or uh, talented IT professionals would like to work with large enterprises. So we had to uh, adopt an approach that uh, our product should be able to manage, you know, uh, uh, manage all the requirements of uh, MSME as well as it should not require very highly talented IT professional to manage it. So we started with a vision that um, MSMEs in future would require IT sophistication for compliance, data protection, and competitiveness. Uh, the available products had very uh, different approach and uh, it required a fresh approach to design a product very specific to MSMEs. And that's how uh, we also listed down so many requirements of MSMEs and uh, we actually wrote uh, this on our design thinking board that um, we should design a product which has 30% of the features of any uh, uh, available product, but it should satisfy 100% of the requirements. And that was our vision and we started it with this. Uh, we uh, developed our uh, pilot prototype, prototype uh, with uh, three years of hard work from 2008 to 2011. In 2011, uh, we were selected by Government of India Department of Science and Technologies as uh, in, um, gold medalist in India Innovates Growth Program. We were seed funded. We got uh, some prize also. We got incubation from Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad because our technology was identified as mass impact technology. As we all know, there are millions of MSMEs exist in India. And uh, if the economy is expected to be driven by MSMEs, they need some Indian product uh, to really help them becoming globally competitive. So that was our Eureka moment. And as founders, we thought that we have hit the jackpot and that was our moment. And we thought that now uh, we have a flourishing uh, business altogether. But when we launched this particular product, uh, uh, you know, um, we miserably failed because when we launched this particular product, hardware was nowhere. Hardware was nowhere in 
the picture. We only designed the software prototype and that software prototype was supposed to be installed on the hardware of the computer or, or, or computer or hardware or computer given by the customer. Now uh, we miserably failed for three reasons. The first reason was our form of product offering was a software kind of form. And in those days, uh, paying for a software was not something, uh, you know, um, considered, you know, uh, reasonable or rational. People thought that softwares are free and because there was a prominence of piracy. Uh, we deployed our product on cloud so that they don't have to purchase the uh, software. Then uh, there were internet challenges. People were not able to use our product in those days because in those days, internet was a challenge. Lease lines were so expensive. You know, I'm talking about the uh, pre-geo era, you know, uh, after geo had uh, democratized the entire internet connectivity, you know, now things are very abundantly available. But in those days, they were not. So the one, uh, the mentality of not paying for the software to um, availability of internet and the form of the product on cloud was prohibiting to them to um, basically use our product. And uh, third was, uh, I'm talking about the era of pre-demonetization where industries were not very much in the stream. They were uh, part of both parallel economies, economy number one and economy number two. So most of the times these MSMEs did not want to put their data on the cloud uh, because they did not want their data to be accessed by the authorities. So uh, our failure story started. Uh, we uh, realized that uh, getting an award is not enough. Uh, it has this particular product has to be accepted by um, Indian MSMEs, you know, wholeheartedly. So we decided that uh, let us redesign the product. And uh, by year 2013, 12, 13, we came up with our own hardware. And on that hardware, we deployed our software. And uh, that particular hardware was uh, on-premise deployment for an MSME. So it uh, actually solved all the challenges. Uh, one, it was on-premise. So there was no need to in of internet to access it. Uh, two, the MSME was getting hardware. He did not, he, in his perception, he was not paying for the software. He was paying for the hardware. And third, because the data is uh, close to MSME uh, in his own premises, uh, they were not worried about economy number two, economy number one. So that is how our failure story started. We were uh, almost two years uh, uh, figuring out uh, what to do after our first version of the product was not very well accepted in the market because of its form, because of prominent piracy, because of internet challenges, and because of um, because of uh, economy parallel economy situations. Uh, post 2016, uh, you know, we um, got all these things right. And then it was overwhelmingly, um, you know, uh, accepted by the MSMEs and we reached the thousands of installations, lakhs of deployments. And that is how an Indian product has traveled. So let us understand uh, what, what kind of custom, uh, customer persona we, we had in our mind. So we did not design this product for the global companies or MNCs or Indian MSMEs or Indian, Indian MNCs or Indian large enterprises. We focused on the verticals like manufacturing, architect, construction, design, engineering, biotech, pharmaceuticals, stockbrokers, automation, and instrumentation. We, uh, we also uh, uh, profiled our customer persona as they should have a turnover of 5 crores, 200 crores, or 10 to 150 computer users. And uh, uh, that actually was uh, very much relevant. It made us very vast market uh, uh, to explore, eligible for a vast market. And most of these uh, uh, target segment companies, engineering companies, manufacturing companies, biotech, pharmaceuticals, who are MSMEs, are actually suppliers to large enterprises or exporters. And because they are growing, because they have a lot of data, which is their IPR, or because they exchange a lot of technology with their uh, principals, uh, and they sign non, non disclosure agreements, they have to uh, go through compliance audit, cybersecurity audit. Uh, they require something which is plug and play. They do it and that happens, you know. So uh, we designed this particular product for this kind of vertical. It almost made it vertical agnostic. Uh, you can imagine any MSME in this particular verticals. 
we fixed the size so that uh, we were not competing uh, with the products uh, which are very uh, which are designed with a large uh, scale usage and which are priced accordingly and their complexities require it professionals and uh, we actually uh, dealt with a number of use cases any company which requires compliance obligation any company which requires competitive exploit which requires to protect competitive exploitation there are so many companies who um, who are in tender bidding you know and many a times if data is leaked then tender is uh, gone you know uh, they are completely exploited many times the insider uh, of the company uh, leaks the data or take away the data and entire ipr investment goes waste we also designed uh, the product for business continuity assurance uh, there are plants factories uh, companies which uh, do a lot of time bound uh, activities and if something happens uh, wrong in their data or data is lost their business continuity is at stake so one of the use cases we meet was um, business continuity assurance uh, we also focused on cost minimization as you understand black box is a single hardware single software product uh, it does not require multiple hardware multiple software so it can very easily minimize the cost of software hardware subscriptions even internet bandwidth and uh, it also uh, opened the doors for uh, people who are not very uh, very brilliant it professionals nowadays if you look at uh, um, you know it industry has a lot to offer in terms of employment but it is only offered to those who are uh, very brilliant those who know the subject well and because of it institutes or colleges mushrooming in india um, majority of the youth uh, really don't get to uh, basically very large enterprises like infosys tcs accenture and they are unemployed so for them uh, we actually started a cap, um, black box certification program who can do it and who can be placed in black box uh, um, deployed black box deployed customer and uh, that is how uh, the salary standards were not as much as um, you know someone who is working in a foreign company as an it professional and salary standards were very very moderate at the same time it minimized the cost for msmes because they did not require very highly talented it professionals to manage their it so these were the use cases um, basically in terms of uh, what kind of verticals we would serve and what kind of size of the companies we would serve we'll move to the next uh, slide so this is something which are unknown uh, part of unknown facts you know so we have basically um we developed so many features uh, those features are uh, having very specific benefits and it has a very good uh, kra i would say it saves cost you know um and how it saves cost this is many a times it is very less known feature people buy black box for compliance or for data protection but there are certain things which can really enhance the productivity which can really um, expand the possibilities of uh, increasing roi on their overall it investment so i will talk about uh, these unknown features one by one the first first feature is device hardening you know most of the times uh, in traditional it systems uh, we have active directory we have domain controller but most of the times uh, when the user is in the lan or user is in that particular environment then only those policies are applied i'm talking about the policies on the users just like we have hr policies there has to be it policy what i can do on my computer will, will i be assigned desktop or laptop if i am using laptop what can i do what what kind of software i can install what kind of uh, restrictions are going to be imposed on me as a laptop user or as a desktop user how will my data be backed up so many things so uh, these are the policies and uh, most of the times when users work remotely and after covid it is very very uh, normal um, most of the times these users are out of the policy when they uh, they are out of the environment so we have uh, innovated we have designed an agent and this particular agent resides on the computer system of the user so even if user is out of the office environment all those policies are basically there and that is the job of device hardening so we harden the device so that user cannot use it the way the user wants but it will be used the way the organization wants basically 
Similarly, there is another thing is data restore confidence. You know, uh, the primary chamber, hidden chamber kind of architecture in our hardware and our cloud services with uh, extraordinary compression and encryption. Uh, organizations have data restore confidence and uh, every day organization gets a report about their status of their data backup, data backup. They also get the dashboard on which they can track which laptop is backed up properly, which server is backed up properly, whether backup of the black box is happening or not. So there is a, it is not a kind of one way communication. Uh, you set up the black box to take the backup and then um, it gives you the feedback also. So it's a two way communication. So if there is anything wrong, uh, you are the first to know. It's not like when uh, data is lost, you know, you, you realize that backup was not happening for some reason. And then that reason is nothing but an excuse. So black box imparts very good data, restore confidence. We have another technology which is very, very less known, which is email shadowing. Whether you use MS365 or Google Workspace or any other uh, email systems, most of the times your email data is uh, with Google or on Microsoft Cloud. Let's say tomorrow you want to change the service provider. Many a times uh, it is so high an exit barrier. You cannot really change just because you are not able to migrate the data from MS365 or Google Workspace. So here black box uh, does email shadowing. So whichever email comes in or goes out, uh, it stores itself in your premise, okay? And it also segregates user-wise. So tomorrow, if you want to change your service provider from X to Y, uh, you don't need to, uh, you know, be at their, uh, at their mercy to be able to get your data. You already have your data. You just uh, have to migrate that data to the new service provider and you are good to go. So email shadowing is a very, very, uh, less known feature. Then we have DNS splitter technology where uh, we have made it possible that you can use the same domain, domain name. You can use the same domain name, but you can use multiple service providers. So most of the times what happens, an MSME has around 50 users, email users. And out of 50, only 10 use all the features of Google or Microsoft uh, 365. And rest of the users just check their emails. They require good email system, that's it. They don't need multiple features. But still the organization is uh, uh, supposed to pay full for all 40 users who are not going to use those features. So we have created a DNS feature technology where you can continue to use OS 360, Microsoft 365 or uh, Google Workspace or any such premium service provider for the 10 users. And for rest of the 40 uh, users, you can use another email system, which is provided by Blackbox. And that also uh, is highly secured, very reliable, and you can minimize your cost. Then we have a feature called happy hours. That is also very less known feature. Uh, most of the times what happens is that when user is out, you know, he's working from home or airport or hotel, uh, our firewall restrictions don't apply on him. And at that time, there's a data leakage possibility. At that time, there is a possibility of productivity loss. In this, what we have done is uh, the user is allowed uh, to use only minimum required websites, nothing else. And in case he wants to access something which is not listed in minimum required website, he can go to that particular website only through happy hours. And as soon as he checks in the happy hours, which is very easy thing to do, um, the data will be isolated. So data won't be available. So as an organization owner or IT strategist, you are not worried about data leakage. Even if user goes on Google Drive and it is not part of minimum required website, you don't have to worry about it. He can only download the data from Google Drive. He cannot upload anything from Google Drive. Then we have come up with uh, one of its kind dual profiling uh, thing. You know, many MSMEs actually budget uh, the laptops uh, for their users and they'll give the laptops to the users. Many a times what happens that these users uh, don't uh, maintain those laptops very well. And many a times as user changes or employee changes, the MSME ends up buying another laptop. So uh, in order to realize uh, the cost uh, element, uh, we designed a dual profiling technology, which allows the employee to use his own or her laptop. In that laptop, there are two profiles. One is personal profile, another is professional profile. Inside the professional profile, organ uh, that particular user can access whatever data of organization, enterprise data he can access, he can access applications. But in, when he switches to personal profile, he cannot access anything. 
and the same time uh, only enterprise policies data leakage prevention data theft prevention data loss prevention cloud backup everything happens only while he is or working in the professional profile so that has eased out a lot of uh, uh, investment for msmes in our laptops now many msmes they uh, allow user to use their own laptop uh, most of the times the reason for giving the laptop to the user is to um, prevent data leakage and data loss but now on the laptop of the belong belonging to the user you can achieve the same objective and minimize the then we had commoditized application virtualization. When we talk about application virtualization, the first name comes in our mind is Citrix, which is very expensive. MSMEs cannot really uh, use that particular technology. It requires big investment. It requires, uh, you know, good technical expertise as well as it requires to pay, um, you know, significant subscription. We have developed application virtualization technology and we have commoditized it. So we focus not to virtualize the server side application, we focus to virtualize the client side application, which is very innovative. Uh, so that uh, when you uh, use client side application in virtual environment, uh, you can very easily uh, um, allow your user to work from um, outside and they can seamlessly access your ERP systems, application systems and or VPN. So you don't have to give them remote desktop kind of uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, you can save cost as well. You can secure better because remote desktop is most vulnerable to any ransomware attack. Then we focused on productivity monitoring, especially after COVID, you know, people were working from home and we were not knowing what is happening. So uh, we started um, another feature called uh, playback office and that particular payback of uh, play, playback office and that playback office was uh, taking the screenshots of the users uploading on the black box. So in case someone wants to check what was happening on a computer uh, one can check and now there is a lot of development happening in our research and uh, it will give a lot of productivity report in new versions to come then we were the first to supply integrated power management system with black box black box is supposed to be the data center you know data center of your data and if uh, anything happens and you all are, most of the msmes operate from remote areas where power conditions are not so regulated and in that case, most of the times data loss happens through power condition failures. And uh, we actually designed an algorithm and integrated with a very reputed APC uh, UPS company. So whenever there is anything, any problem, the UPS will send a signal to Blackbox to shut down so that you do not lose your data, your latest files are saved properly. So that these are the less known features many a times uh, people don't know. And that's the purpose of this particular webinar so that people can get to know about it. Uh, and from these features, there are so many benefits. So when you use black box, you avoid the cost of hardware in terms of file server, in terms of a domain controller, in terms of a NAS device you avoid the cost of software in terms of windows server client access license remote uh, desktop license um so it, it reduces uh, you know your hardware and software cost significantly by our estimate uh, it reduces the software and hardware cost by around 50 uh, 55 percent hardware cost and 70 percent software cost then you can organize your MSMEs very well and you have better control on your IT policies, how users can access data, consume data, and uh, how you can get a control on your emails, which is the major communication thing, you know. You have bring your own device flexibility so that you don't have to worry about giving the back, uh, laptops to your um, users. Then uh, bandwidth uh, frugal applications. Our uh, application virtualization is very, very bandwidth frugal. It uses very, very less kind of bandwidth. And as I told, Playback Office can help you becoming confident whether your user is productive or not. So in nutshell, saves 55% of hardware cost, 70% of software cost, 70% of email subscription, and 50% of uh, bandwidth. I'll tell you why we are saying this, because most of the times when MSMEs make a purchase decision and evaluate various products, they evaluate various products for one problem. So they end up, uh, end up buying multiple products for multiple problems. Here, you can have one product and you can buy 
uh, one product and you can solve multiple problems. So that is the value it gives, basically. That is the value it gives. So we move to the next uh, uh, slide. Uh, before that, uh, I would like to uh, ask Prasanna to launch the poll. Uh, we would like to understand what are your problems and what kind of priorities you have in your IT infrastructure. So uh, as we see from the attendees, 44% have cybersecurity compliance obligation by customer as their priority. 44% have data leakage prevention to stop competitive exploitation as their priority. 78% uh, have data loss prevention for business continuity maintenance as their priority. And 67% uh, have minimization of software and hardware cost as their priority. Yes, then I think this would have given you some good inputs uh, uh, about black box. Now we will move to the next uh, part of it. So uh, we have got uh, some patents and I will I would like to explain those things. What is it about? So first our patent is, uh, of course, the patent is not named as autocratic centralization. It is technology, so it is. But yes, let me explain what goes in autocratic centralization in terms of patents. Basically, uh, Autocratic centralization is something which we have actually seen uh, a very, very uh, practical problem. Most of the MSMEs have users who are not uh, basically, uh, who are not, uh, I would say, IT savvy people. So many a times they have some server or some NAS device and uh, they ask users to save that data on the NAS device or the map the folder. Most of the times what happens that uh, users forget or ignorantly or negligently, they don't do it. And organization's data remains scattered. And uh, then organization has to take backup of each and every user's computer system, which is not possible for an MSME. So we designed this technology autocratic centralization where we control the action of the user whenever he or she wants to save the data. So whenever he or she wants to save the data, the options given to that particular user would be only the black box. So user has to compulsorily save the data there. He doesn't have a choice. And that is how uh, it solves an MSME specific problem. When we talk about large enterprise, they have resources to take backup of every computer every day. They have IT savvy users, you know, and uh, they can really deal with it, uh, you know, more democratically. But here, uh, we don't give a choice to the user and user has to save the data on the central server, which is black box. And that is what uh, we have done. Another is data isolation technology, where uh, we have uh, uh, developed something where it senses that when user goes out of uh, any internet site, which is not listed in, um, in minimum allowed website, um, it will automatically isolate the data. So when user goes on those sites, he can only download, he cannot upload the data. So that is something which uh, uh, gives very easy and accurate uh, data leakage prevention to MSMEs over internet. Then we have, uh, 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 you know, IPR on primary and hidden technology, hidden chamber technology, where uh, we create a logically separated, uh, uh, you know, partition, uh, hardware partition, which is not on the same, same, uh, same uh, hard disk. And that particular hard disk uh, takes the data from uh, the main user's uh, uh, hard drive 
uh, you uh, the hardware was which you first save the data on black box and uh, it follows dcdc protocol disconnect connect disconnect connect protocol and uh, it makes sure that even if there is a ransomware uh, the organization can get the data back and they can continue their business then i explained dual profiling uh, which which is very easy for msmes to allow users to work from their own computer system we have some uh, um, intellectual property rights on bandwidth optimization technology, which you use on application virtualization. So you can use Tally from browser, you can use your inventory application from browser because we virtualize the, um, we virtualize the applications client, not the server side. And then we have an email header parsing technology, which we uh, name it as DNS filter technology. So it parses the header of the email and let's say you've divided your users in two parts. One, those who use all the resources of MS365 or Google Workspace, and the other who use only vanilla, plain, plain vanilla email system. This email header parsing um, will make sure that, uh, you know, um, the email for, the, uh, for those uh, sophisticated users goes to um, their box. And for rest of the users, it goes to uh, other, other boxes, you know, which are not having, which are not created on Google Workspace or MS365. And, and we have also uh, always kept practicality um, on the top of our design thinking. So I'll tell you, most of the times, uh, uh, large enterprises are equipped with so many systems, tools, and not whatnot. And they have a, a, a big team, you know, uh, in IT department. So they can monitor a lot of things. But in MSME, it is not possible. So when you don't monitor someone, you have to control someone. You know, let's say for example, uh, you want you don't want to monitor someone. Uh, of course, you monitor someone, then uh, you can figure out whether he has done something wrong or not. But if you don't have resources to monitor, you have to control so that they don't they can't do anything like autocratic centralization, you don't monitor them, you know, that please save the data uh, on the central location. No, they cannot do it. So it is through by control. So we believe in maximum controls, minimum monitoring kind of thing, which is suitable to MSMEs because they don't have um, resources to monitor the things. Uh, we have on-demand, uh, unrestricted internet and minimum required website. So you see, MSME setup does not have uh, that kind of IT team, which uh, keeps track of so many new websites, whether those websites are, uh, uh, you know, it can be misused for data leakage or not, you don't have it. So better is, you know, that these are the required website, you know, they are not, uh, you know, um, they cannot be misused for data leakage and rest of the websites can be accessed only when your data is isolated. So you actually solve this problem with check and net and it is very accurate, you don't have to worry about it. One more hidden thing is blind carbon copy intercept, which is not you, which is not available in most of the systems. So most of the times data can be leaked even by simple blind carbon copy. It could be done by just I'm sending an email to my boss and I'm sending BCC to the competitor. My boss would not know that that email is being seen by the competitor. So it has a blind carbon copy intercept also. Screen captures for productivity monitoring, DNS letters the technology I explained as, you know, you can minimize your email cost. There is something called data deleter identifier. See, in MSME, many a times users or insiders are very mischievous or they have some uh, ulterior intentions and they just delete the data. Sometimes people are very less IT savvy, they just end up accidentally delete the data. In that case, you can, of course, restore the data at the same time, you can also identify who has deleted the data, which is very important for an MSME. Then we provide many controls on U, uh, USB. It is inbound only USB, or it is outbound USB with report, or it is no USB only for keyboard and mouse, it will work, something like that. So it gives a lot of flexibility to MSME as per what they require. Then email shadowing technology, as I've explained, uh, can actually uh, make you independent of your cloud service providers. Tomorrow, if they try to bully you by increasing the price or by changing the policy, which Google has done recently, um, you know, uh, you don't have to really surrender to those demands. You, you have your email data, you can migrate it to any system. So that is what uh, we mean by practicality, actually. So these are the hidden technologies. Uh, 
uh, let me tell you what we do uh, uh, i mean by trend setting policies so we when we started this company um, we were in the uh, you know um, kind of environment where oem or maker of the solution does not sell directly they have distributors they have channel partners and then the end customer so uh, what we do is uh, we also have similar thing you know but in case channel partner uh, is not available in certain areas we we deal uh, directly also so customer gets that benefit in terms of cost many a times uh, um, you have a full price buyback of old solution let's say today you have bought a black box for 2 lakhs of rupees okay and let's say tomorrow you need to double your users and double your storage capacity now when you double your users it has to the, the hardware has to be capable enough to uh, you know basically um, handle double number of users and double number of data so uh, we don't uh, do any kind of uh, any kind of uh, jugaad you know we just tell them that why don't you buy new box whatever you have paid for old box will be bought back if that particular time of decision is after 42 months of the purchase and before 60 months of the purchase so many a times uh, our customers when they grow we help them scale up without losing the value of the solution so let's say for example they want to double the solution and let's say they have already paid 2 lakhs of rupees and let's say new solution is let's say 4 and 1/2 lakhs of rupees then they just pay 2 and 1/2 lakhs of rupees and then double their capacity something double or triple their capacity it it happens like that so it's a trend setting nobody in our industry buys back uh, the old solution when somebody wants to upgrade to new solution we have 24 month window to exercise that buyback offer you know um, so around 42 months to 60 months uh, it is like that then you have data migration uh, inclusive buyback so when you go for a buyback you don't have to worry about the migration of data from old to new that is done by us uh, we have three years standard warranty and we also give two years extended warranty so we are the ones who give 500 hardware warrant five years hardware warranty and uh, whoever is under our amc gets the standby devices if there is any problem so they don't lose business value then hidden facts are uh, our products appreciate you know uh, so basically every 6 months the price of the black box increases of course because of the dollar movements or the price of the semiconductors but we also add so many features and when you add so many features we increase the price but those features as long as it is possible and compatible with the old black boxes those features are extended to old customers free of cost so that is uh, that is an appreciating product so they have taken a product for with let's say uh, 80 features and maybe th three years down the line that product has 120 features we have a knowledge center where uh, we do a lot of webinar we have black box knowledge center in which you can uh, interact with the stalwarts of the industry we have msme focused webinars we do free of cost uh, trainings uh, under our another uh, uh, funded division which is united sme where you can enroll your employees for so many soft skills the effective cost of the black box is restricted to approximately 200 to 300 rupees per month per user if you look at the five year horizon so let's say if you buy a box for uh 5 lakhs of rupees and then every year you pay 50000 rupees um so 2 and 1/2 lakhs sorry 2 lakhs of rupees you would pay for next 4 years first year amc is free so approximately your uh, cost is approximately uh, 5 lakhs and 2 lakhs 7 lakhs and you divide it by 5 and divide it by number of users and divide it by number of months that cost would be 200 to 300 rupees per user depending on the model and capacity you select uh you have uh, sometimes we come up with 0% emi options on credit card also uh, so you can also grab those opportunities and uh, match your cash flows and in case you want your people to get certified for black box you know we also give a um, certification program they can enroll in our academy and as a customer you get a very special discount and then you have someone who knows black box very well to maintain your black box so these are the trend setting practices and uh, hidden facts about the black box so i would uh, request uh, prasanna uh, 
to you know um, instruct for the question answers we are now in the question answers uh, session i would be happy to answer the question we already have few questions let me uh, go through that So we have a question from Gahana KJ. Uh, how to reinstall the software which is being corrupt? See, uh, black box is about your data. It is not about your environment of the software in your computer. So in case uh, you have installed Windows, uh, Windows 11 and installed many software, and let's say something happens to that particular computer and you want to restore the entire computer again, black box is not the right product, you know? But yes, whatever data is there, for that particular user, you can very easily restore. So it is not about reinstall of the uh, software of the black box. Then why is it uh, why it is necessary to change the internet port from 808 to 818 when there is an internet issue? See, uh, it's a it's, it's a diagnosis method. You know, uh, we know that 808 port is uh, very much well known for proxy server. So in case you have a network uh, threat in the network it would attack port 808 just to uh, diagnose whether uh, that attack is happening on 808 or not. Uh, I think uh, uh, this 818 happens. Yeah, any more questions? Uh, you can type the question or you can raise your hand. Prasanna will unmute your mic. Yeah, uh, Prasanna, we can uh, conclude the session. In case there's any question, we will uh, take it. Yeah, we have one question. Now, Office, this is your image does not support POC3 protocol, so your mail shadow does not work. What is the solution for it? Uh, no, it is not. Yeah, I understand. Office uh, 365 does not support POC3. Uh, there are two answers to that. One, it is not right to say that it does not support POC3. Uh, you can tell MSF uh, Microsoft and make it supported. And two, the black box uh, supports IMAP. So you can shadow the emails. There is no problem. So um, it works either way. Either you enable POC3 by telling Microsoft or you have uh, IMAP protocol on which black box will shadow the uh, emails. There won't be any issue. Any more questions? Prasanna, you can conclude the session. Thank you, sir, for such an insightful session about Black Box. Um, I thank everyone on the behalf of Sinosoft for attending this knowledgeable session. I hope you have enjoyed and learned the presentation. Uh, please fill the survey form, which you will get at the end of the session. Give us your valuable feedback. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.